Executive Mayor of Johannesburg, uh, Mayor Jeff Makubo. Welcome to Soweto TV, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Lieto, and good, good, good afternoon to the viewers. Um, let's just get straight to it, into it. Uh, you are now the leading person in Johannesburg after only three and a half years of the party being out of the office. How does that make you feel, and what's your, what are your plans? Um, we, we, are, we are glad that we, we, on behalf of the African National Congress and uh, our partners, we call ourselves a government of local unity, uh, that we in the driving seat to push transformation, to put our residents first, um, to turn around the city to be a city that we all know, to have a clean city, um, to have a safe city. So, so the plans are in the short term are around cleanliness and safety. That's why this morning I even met uh, the, the team from, from the police, the team from bio enforcement. Uh, we were worried about this uncontrolled growth of uh, shacks, um, land, land invasion, uncontrolled land invasion. Uh, almost like it's an unmanaged city yes. or a mismanaged city. So, yes. so we want to bring back uh, law and order. Okay. So now that we, we're talking about that, you know, are you going to work on the plans that were already in place to make sure that you control the issue around land invasion as the city, or you feel maybe there is a need to in, you know, insert some of the new strategies that you might, your office might bring along? Around 2012, um, we council adopted a policy, and a policy called the anti-land invasion policy. Um, and we, 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 we were on a journey to reverse informality to, to count the number of informal settlements, contain them, uh, electrify them, give them level of service one or two, ensure that there are stand pipes, you know, the, the roads are graded and all that. So at least work to formalize them, pack them, give them addresses, uh, work with the Savia General to, to give them uh, numbers. Now, what happened post-2016, um, I think as a quid pro quo of politics, you know, yes. if, you remove, if you remove the people who are invading, um, because you remember there's a party that openly pronounced that land must be invaded. Yes. Uh, but the city did not um, apply the bylaws and did not implement the bylaws uh, to reverse and contain that uncontrolled growth. It's stealing from the future because to take services to those areas is going to be pricey into the future. So now, I think the issue is important here because when you drive along uh, high, um, Golden Highway, you see lots of shakes there, and you can tell that that somehow those shakes went there three, two years ago. How are you then going to work in trying to reverse that, or if there is a plan to reverse that at all? Tomorrow I'm receiving a, a detailed plan, a reaction plan. Our strategy is twofold. One is contain, no more, no more further land invasions. Okay. And then two is to counter. So the people that are there would legitimately so claim that to be their land, or...? It's not their land. Okay. There are six court orders. Um, we, we are aware that there, there are people who are doing what we call shack farming. So one person will own 10 shacks and look for, for, for tenants, so, oh. so, so they collect rent. Oh. So we're saying that you can't have real estate and correct rent from property you don't own. Oh. Um, so so, so we, we have a strategy that will be unfolding together with the police, together with SAPS, JNPD, and other law, law enforcement agencies to find go to the root of this land invasion. I mean, in Alexander, uh, it was quite clear that uh, as the houses were demolished, most of the houses had no occupants. So mm. people were, 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 were building the houses with the hope that they'll get tenants. So that's your next big assignment as the city, to be able to... It's one of the three. Okay. As I said, one, one of them is to look at uh, land use and, and um, uh, counter land invasion. Two, we, have, we want to look at uh, cleaning. The, okay. the city of Johannesburg is... Filthy, yes. it's dirty. Yes. Not only the city of Johannesburg, but the inner cities, the city, townships as well. The townships, the informal yes. settlements, illegal yes. dumping, yes. the other inner cities as well, mid rent inner city, uh, Runback, uh, the taxi rank at Runback in the inner city, Rodiport. Uh, we're getting a plan to get the city working, uh, working and to be clean. But not only that, we need to talk to people, must be in love with the environment. Yes. We, 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 we litter. Yes. And we expect somebody to come pick up. So, so that's, that's our second big pro, 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 pro project. The third is uh, around safer cities. We're introducing a program of 10 JMPD officers in each ward okay. um, so that there must be visible policing. The residents of Johannesburg must not only be safe, but they must feel safe. See, yes. so, so those are three top 
priority issues of the mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we, you are not talking because you're from another planet. So you're talking here and the, most of the residents, people that belong to your party or different parties, but I'm sure you would want the people to sort of like have a buy-in in this in making, like you say, making sure that the programs that get introduced to them, they are also able to make the job much easier for you to be able to execute them. True. Um, we, we are driven by a priority called um, engaged and active citizenry. Now, our, 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 our citizens and residents of Johannesburg must be engaged. They must not be passive recipient of services. They yes. must be active in, in delivering those services themselves, which is why I think it was a pity that the program like Josie Edward could have been cancelled uh, by my predecessor, because w what it did, it engaged citizens in the, in the delivery of service in their own locality. Mm. You know, when I grew up in Rockville, we used to clean the parks ourselves. We used to uh, clean the, the dams ourselves because we were proud of our environment. Now, now that pride is gone. We want to reinstill it. Uh, well, if you say that the Togoza Park, it's, it's, it's not so clean now. I mean, there's, I'm sure that's one of the areas that you'd love to start if you want to go and just to clean around it because people do go there and it's a, it's a very beautiful space for families. But if you have a lot of uh, untidiness around it, it might actually not serve its intended purpose. But what I'm saying is a shame over the last three years that um, a flagship open space... So like you, you feel that Park. maybe the township set up and infrastructure was ignored and it was more into the inner city development that happened in the, uh, from in the previous administration? I, I'm not sure where they forecast, quite honestly, because the city is dirty, the townships are dirty, open spaces are not managed. So, so it's not up to us to dwell on to what the people past, didn't yes, do. Yes. Um, I was saying at the Lekhotla that I don't just focus on the rearview mirror. The windscreen is much bigger. Yes. So I'm looking forward, forward. To, to where we're going. So, so, so you, you know, when Togoza Park was uh, uh, re rebuilt, that dam was re yes. refilled, that, that part on the right-hand side towards the station uh, was established, you know, with trees and all that. That was in 2001, 2002 by yeah. former Mayor Masondo. Yeah. Now, now, that's my township, and, and I'm proud of... I come from there as well, <laughs> two streets from the, <laughs> the dam. Yeah, so, so that's, that's my township, and to see it in a state of decay... Uh, it's something that uh, really hurt us. Because even people who are getting married, they don't, they don't go to town anymore to take yeah. pictures. They've got facilities in Soweto. We need to maintain those facilities. But you them. spoke about safety there. Mm -hmm. How then can we assure this, the residents that they would be safe? Because half the time, the, like this past weekend, we just came from a long weekend where we saw scores of people going out with families, but you'd still see people who get marked and fights and all of those things. Are you working around police visibility in those areas, especially now that it's festive season? Yes. Um, every open space, every park uh, should have park rangers, and they are part of, um, of the law enforcement uh, to ensure that people don't do, don't do wrong things in parks. Uh, in fact, drinking is not really allowed in parks, yes, and yes, uh, yes. we need to contain that. We work together with the JMPD and work together with SAPS. It's not only in Soweto. Every park, people have to use the open spaces in the city for leisure. For leisure and to be able to have time. To have, Let, yeah. Let's just relax the discussion mm. a bit. Um, what are some of the things that you're excited about in terms of being able to return in the office and knowing the possibility that come the local elections, you would at least it would have maybe done some corrective measures? Saving the people of Johannesburg. 85 wards uh, in the city of Johannesburg uh, are led by the party I come from the ANC, um, 85 of those wards have been neglected. But we are aware that even the other, other um, uh, 40 or so wards have not had the level of service that they should. Now, putting the residents first, I call it resident centricity, citizen centricity, customer centricity. If we can get that part right, that we're not here for ourselves, we're here to serve. That excites me. That's it gets me to wake up every day, even it's December now, I'm here. <laughs> it's because I think about the citizen, I think about the resident of Johannesburg. A lot of townships have young people who are unemployed. Mm. And in, 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 in the townships, we see a lot of dilapidated buildings, mm. unused space. Mm. 
and we we were hearing we did stories around people complaining that SMMEs were not given enough room to be able to function hence we have high unemployment rate mm. what are your plans together with the Houghton government to work around that fortunately you know when there's a alignment between national province and uh, and local you can do more so this works to your favor Th there has been complete misalignment yeah. now now I, I i speak to the premier I speak to the president the president has uh, facilitated investments the issue is what what's the city's role you know building plans the ease of doing business now now we we have to lobby the president that some of these investments facilitated must come to Johannesburg. Yes, yes. And what do they do uh, with these investments? They have to address youth unemployment and unemployment generally. Uh, it worries me that, uh, you know, you'd swear when you go to Soweto, you, you think it's a weekend. Yes. And people are just, are just unemployed. Yeah. So, so we're going to focus on that. Which, which is exactly, I mean, we, we've been talking to a lot of residents in Soweto in particular, and we, they actually just gave us a message to say, look, they gave us a question to say, could you please go to the mayor and ask if what's going, what are his plans about the place itself? Because if you look at from just next to Barra, Baragwanath going down, it's shacks and houses, but there's not much that has changed in terms of infrastructure and development. And that speaks to obviously lack of opportunities in the area itself. So what's your message for the people of Soweto in particular? You know, Soweto is a model of city development throughout the world. The Soweto that I grew up in in the 70s and the Soweto of today are very different. It's not enough, but we still have to invest more in Soweto. A lot of investment went into Soweto, you know, uh, tarring of roads in Soweto, upgrade of stormwater, uh, planting of trees, livability in Soweto changed. You know, you know there are people who don't even go to town anymore. There's Maponya Mall, there's uh, Chablani Mall, there's uh, Proti Gardens. There's life in Soweto. Yes. There, there's home affairs. So services are being brought to Soweto. Um, uh, what is the problem is backyardism, where people build a lot of shakes around their yards. Uh, it's a problem of electricity. Yes. That is not enough uh, capacity, and, and people are not paying. Uh, it's an issue of water that people don't pay for water, they bridge water meters. Now we need to get to a stage where the residents of Soweto meet government halfway. They pay yes. for the services and we keep on improving the infrastructure of Soweto. Uh, you know, there was a program of the government of building brick and mortar back, 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 back rooms on behalf of, 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 of communities. communities it happened yes. in Orlando uh, and it's giving value to a family. We need to start uh, reintroducing that program to, to deal with backyardism that's uh, emerging around, around the town, our townships. We've actually been doing that as well with the stories around this, that you find that there is someone with literally 10 shacks, and then the next door they don't have even back rooms. But when it, it comes to the issue of electricity, they both they equally suffer. Mm. So are you maybe going to have road shows that, try, that would somehow try and uh, educate the residents more as not just to come with the fact, the, the, the exertion to say pay your electricity, but these are some of the things that we some, somehow we can actually take you through. That's our, that's our view that, uh, you know, if you don't pay you for what you use um, and, and you, you collect rent, you know, from 10 checks, but you still expect not to pay, yes. uh, but you charge the tenant for water, for rent, and for accommodation. And you uh, all equally distribute that electricity all Yeah, but you. The, the same amount of current that goes into a house goes to all houses in Soweto. So that's why when you extend your house, you have to apply to the municipality to upgrade what comes into your house. So, so, so it's a single phase, two phase, three phase, depending on what you need. Now, if you've got 10 checks, in winter, they've got 10 heaters, 10 stoves, mm. uh, plus the in, main house. In one yard. Surely electricity is going to trip. And what, when electricity trips, our communities go to the street or they go to the councillors' houses. So, so we are going to be engaged with our communities around being responsible citizens. Okay. No. So that, that, that would actually speak then to the misalignment that you're saying that I was going to ask you, do you think the, the citizens and the residents are ready in terms of being able to tackle some of the issues that come with them taking responsibility for the actions that they're doing so that they would be able to help the city uh, execute its mandate. 
Hence, I say the priority of engaged and active citizenry. So the citizen is engaged. They know these are my responsibility. Because remember, rights come with responsibilities. Yes, yes, so it's, it's my right to get electricity. What's your responsibility? To pay for it. Um, it's my right to get water. What's my responsibility to pay for it? Now, if you can afford, the city is called what you call the expanded social package. So you come and, uh, and, and, and we, we do a means test. So the amount of free electricity and free water you get is depending on the level of um, uh, deprivation, we call it. Yes. You know, the band one, band two, band three. So, so the, more, the, the poorer families will get more services than, than the ones who can afford. So we encourage them to come. Mm -hmm. But one of the thi things that this government is going to do is to reintroduce free six kilolitres of water oh, for every okay. household. Oh. Yeah. So now, um, as much as uh, uh, people are unemployed, we still have lots of ro uh, cars on the road, and that causes like major congestions, accidents, and all of that. What what are your plans around the infrastructure to make sure that we build wider and much more safer roads? You know, so that. I, I, we are able to commute, or are you maybe working with uh, the Department of Transport in terms of trying to work around the issue of people being able to use public transport? How far are we? Because I remember under uh, former mayor, uh, David Masondo, he actually, those are some of the plans that were in place. Uh, are you going to take some of those programs to try and recycle them to make sure that uh, that becomes a reality? Yes. Um, you know, one of the the reasons of introducing BRT is to get people off their, off their cars. Now, South African and their cars are you know, friends, best friends. We love our cars, status symbol, yes. I've arrived. But the truth is, worldwide, they, you can't build yourself out of congestion. You have to move people from their cars into, 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 into public transport. And I know, you know if, you, if you look at uh, the, the parking lot there next to Regina Munda, Tokoza Park. Yeah. Lots of people take their cars, they park, they, they park them there, they jump onto the BRT uh, to and from work. Now, if we can encourage lots of that safety, uh, safe parking spaces, yes. th then we can reduce congestion in Soweto. too. Uh, when you, people using uh, metro bus, park to, park co, but public transport is the way to go. With so many spaces as well, I'm sure you can use the same model with the taxi industry as well, because Half the time we see people still choosing to drive and there's one person in the car and the neighbor is also doing the same thing or lift clubs, for instance. Because not only that, but it also pro affect productivity of companies where people are always late. And that also would then lead to the fact that a lot of people would then be affected. How are you then going to just sort of... The tax industry has been a problem. For no, them. look, the tax industry are very good partner in, in the, the movement of people. In fact, about 80% of our residents uh, every day uh, move, move using taxis. Uh, it's a big number that are that, 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 uh, um, transported every day, uh, minibus taxis and all other forms of taxis, Avanza and all that. We, we, you know, the Department of Transport in the city and province, uh, they work with buses, they work with taxis to find an integrated transport system. So, so I know province has, has formed the Houghton Transport Authority yes. to look at integrating the entire, entire um, uh, public transport system so that yes. you can use one card. You go into a taxi, you tap, you go into the bus, you tap, okay. you go into the Houghton, you tap. We bring in Prasa as well. We have lots of people who are using trains from Naledi right to town yes. or from Frenaheng. Please work on the safety town. though because there's fewer trains and you see people sort of like even riding on top of the trains or on the side of the trains. Yeah, we'll work with Prasa and, and the owners of the, uh, 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 the railway lines to, to ensure that everything is safe here. Yeah. I know we spoke about Sobe too, but I want to know with Alexandra. I mean, there's lack of development there. What are we going to do about that? Alex Especially the, the, the roads uh, and other than the congestion, still... I think one would say epitomizes the faith that you would see in most places. The crime in Alexander would have to be dealt with. Uh, Alex is, a, is one of our priority areas. It's not only the city's priority area, it's a province and national. Yes. You'll remember that the president co uh, formed an interministerial team yes, yes. after the, the Alex shutdown. Uh, and the issue is how to unlock development in the old Alex. You know, you know, to say that there's not been development in Alex, I think is not entirely true. Yes, yes. It's not been enough. 
uh, if you look at what you call the east of Chaski, yes, yes. Uh, there's a mall there, Alex Mall. There's Tsutsumani, there's extension 10, extension 9, right up to the Houten station in Malboro. Lots of houses. There's River Park being built, uh, that was built. Uh, there's Altrek station, Stadium, uh, you know, it's a racetrack and all that. The uh, Kwapengilanga School was built, Togomgoma Clinic was built. And, and, and lots of uh, development has happened in Alex. What the problem is, is that there's an interdict from the landowners that old Alex can be developed. So, so we, there's a statement of intent wherein we bring in national government, provincial government and ourselves to say, how do we unlock that? And Alex will be developed uh, uh, block by block. So in term, politically, in terms of uh, your office, do you see any hurdles maybe that would hinder the progress or what you're trying to do going forward when coming to now, being able to, you always have to bring the issues uh, to the house to be able to implement those things. Do you anticipate any challenges? Well, I mean, in politics, there <laughs> are always challenges. But uh, from the first day, we've been reaching out to everyone. Okay. Let's work together. Everyone's got a stake in Johannesburg. Everyone is, is got a constituency. Let's work for the betterment of our, of our residents. Those who want to find themselves outside will still go back to them and pull them into this consensus that the city of Johannesburg is building for the re remainder of the term. Do you have confidence that your office will restore hope back in Johannesburg, in the city? I am very hopeful uh, and have the confidence that uh, I'm not going to be based in this office only. I'm going to be on the ground. Uh, we are reintroducing mayoral in Bezos, uh, where we'll be engaged with communities. Now, you know, the, there's a saying in politics that uh, the forest of a revolutionary is the people. So yes. if you are a politician and you are afraid of the people and you are locked in offices, then there won't be any development. So from Orange Farm to Ivory Park, from uh, uh, Kensington in the east to Ramsar in the west, so between the middle, we'll be engaging with our communist communities robustly. Okay. So now with the local elections coming next year, other than just what you're going to do, work to deliver, what would you like to see happen? But the ANC comes back with a, with a decisive <laughs> majority. So, uh, you don't, so that you don't have to get into any coalitions that would somehow compromise your, the share of the power to be able to... You know, the NC has never been arrogant with power. Um, if you look at now nationally, the IFP is, is, is the chair of SCOPA. Yes. Uh, Temba Kudu is the chair of SCOPA. Um, in the province, we work with the IFP and the ACDP. Even here during our time when we had absolute majority, Musi Maiman will tell you, you know, we offered him the chairpersonship. We've never been arrogant with power. Yes. Uh, all we want is a decisive mandate so that we can carry out um, the, the, you know, the aspirations of what we seek to achieve, aspirations of our people and all that. So there's no self-respecting political party that doesn't want to win power. Yes. So, so for 2021, uh, we're going to work hard that we come back uh, uh, into office as, as the African National Congress. I know we, we press for time uh, as we get into the last parts of our discussion. What are you going to do with um, the issue of illegal occupying of buildings, especially in the inner city? Um, are you going to carry on or you, you have a different strategy around how to work around the, some of the hijacked buildings around? We will continue um, with, with work that's been done. And that Masondo uh, started something called the Better Buildings Program. Yes. Um, uh, Pakistan, we had something called the Inner City Property Scheme. Uh, uh, the previous mayor had, I don't know what he called it, um, but, but it's, it's, it's a continuum. It's continuing from when that Masondo started. Uh, so so we, we are going to reverse, not only the Inner City, Yes. They hijack buildings in Lens, they hijack buildings in Windsor East, Windsor West, they hijack buildings in Rodiport, uh, they decay buildings in Randberg. We're going to be focusing on restoring law and order and restoring, uh, 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 you know, the skyline of Johannesburg. Johannesburg, yes. Kimchi Pai, you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. people uh, must still enjoy that uh, this is Josie. You know, you know, it's not just any other city, any it's other Josie. City. And it's a historic city. It's Josie. Uh, you must keep it that way. Uh, here we are in Johannesburg. You know, slum lordism, when people come and I check other people's buildings, it's like real land invasion. Yes. Those things must be condemned and they must be pushed back. If there are syndicates, they must be confronted. Uh, okay, now I'm going to get into tourism just for two minutes. The city also, I've seen, we've seen the open bus around and all of those things. How are you then going to make sure that this becomes an interconnected city? 
Well, that was in our initiative, the Hop On, Hop Off bus. Yes. Uh, we, you know, it's, it's a concept that you find in Amsterdam, in New York, in Brazil. So we wanted a Joe Beck version um, of, of the hop. So, so you hop on and then you just, you know, travel to Anisbeck. You can hop off in Villagas Street, yes. hop on, hop off in Maboning. You know, um, so we're trying to attract um, uh, tourists. We know that many tourists land in Johannesburg and go elsewhere. They, they, they go to, they land at Oartambo, they sleep one night and they go to Kruger or they go to Deben, to the sea. So, so we, we, we're finding products uh, that will attract people and make them stay longer in Johannesburg. In Johannesburg. Okay, now, uh, Mr. Mayor, we have, it's Christmas time. Mm. So we just uh, want to ask you maybe if you have a message for the people, for the residents of Johannesburg. No, we're wishing the residents of Johannesburg, uh, all four corners of Johannesburg, a merry, merry, merry Christmas and a prosperous 2020. We, we're wishing them a happy holiday season. They must relax, recharge, be with their families, bond with their families. They must not drink and drive. They must obey the laws of, of the country and stay safe. We're wishing, we're wishing them well in this festive season. Uh, please be safe, be well, um, and, and, and enjoy. Mr. Mayor from Us Soweto TV, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you for inviting us. It's a pleasure. Uh, we'd like to come back again to Soweto TV. Thank you very much. Thank you.